Hey everybody, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be generating seamless fingerprint textures. Um, you can see an example, example GIF of some textures you might be able to generate right here. Um, so this was uh, largely inspired by CG Matter, um, but his tutorial is not uh, seamless across borders, which, you know, is still fine, but uh, let's take a look and see if we can improve that. Um, yeah, so this is a, a follow-up to a video I did really three years ago where I showed off this instancing technique to get fingerprints seamless across borders. And uh, like this commenter pointed out, if you get it across borders, that really improves the seamlessness. So there, uh, here's a little example. This is what we're going to be making. It's a geometry node setup, just like uh, you know CG Matters. Um, you know, customizable, easy to use, easier than the one I created three years ago. But three years ago, there were no geometry nodes. So, anyway, you can see that we have fingerprints that go across the border, and they line up on the other side. So when you zoom out, there really is. It's really not breaking the illusion. If you zoom out far enough, potentially, but. Yeah, you know, you get it dense enough and, and these empty spaces will fill in. Anyway, let's start. So new blender scene, create a plane, scale it up by three and subdivide by two. This is what we are going to call our instancer. And by the way, a written version of this tutorial is on hardsurface.net. That is my new website, which I plan on posting to. Um, so you'll be able to see all of the steps with screenshots as well as you can purchase the final um, final generator for a dollar on Gumroad. Um, if not, you know, just follow along the tutorial and it'll be about the same. So let's uh, select this, go to instancing, select faces, and there we go. That is the trickiest part of this whole tutorial. Let's create a camera, Alt-R to reset the rotation, GZ10, move it up above that. I'm going to set this to an orthographic camera, orthographic scale of two, so that it'll perfectly encompass one of those little grids. So let's create a new collection. Let's call this fingerprints, and we can easily import all of the fingerprints into our scene just by using the images as planes add-on. So let's go file, import images as planes. Um, we're going to go over here, select everything, do Z plus, and then click import images as planes. That'll stack them up all in the Z direction, which is basically what we want. Disable this and render. Uh, you don't have to view it either. And let's select our emitter, or rather our instant surfers, I guess. Go to shading. Oh, I'm freezing here. Uh, I created a new material. We'll just call this void and delete it. And that'll make it perfectly black. Um, just so it's not capturing or bouncing any light. Let's go to world and uh, set this to be perfect black as well. Uh, on our emitter, we're just going to create a new emitter material. And let's see, it looks like we're going to set this to emission. And yep, okay, so everything is making sense. This is being instanced across each face. So that's why it basically looks like a white plane. But now we're going to go to geometry nodes, create a new setup, grab a collection info node, distribute points on faces. We're going to instance on points and then make sure we separate the children, do fingerprints, um, put that in the right one, pick instance and uh, you know, pretty quickly, we have something basic. Let's just expose some of these values. And, yep, so, or rather we want to scale this. Let's go to this node, or this uh, thing, set a default value of like 0.25, and change that to scale. Let's 
Now we want to translate each instance on its z-axis by some random value. And this is just going to eliminate any z fighting. So between 0 and something like 3, it will give it plenty of room. Next, let's rotate these instances randomly on their z coordinate. So we're going to do the same type of setup, random value, except for the max is going to be 2 times pi. So that's 360 degrees of random rotation. Expose this random or this maximum maximum rotation as well as the seed. And let's name those. So max rotation and seed. Seed rotation. And uh, you know, things are coming along. Let's add one more feature that you might want to have. Maybe, maybe not. Kind of. Kind of depends, but it'll make it more customizable, so we will add it. It's going to be a rotational offset. So divide by pi over one, or multiply by pi over 180, and that'll convert our degrees to radians. And now we can uniformly rotate these. Um, just, you know, if you're really looking to customize, that's something you can do. And, of course, we can change the seed, the scale of the fingerprints, uh, as well as the density. All right. So now let's realize these instances. We want to set their material. Oops. Set material. Then we're also going to generate a random color a random value between 0 and 1 to color these fingerprints. And you're going to want to do that in geometry nodes rather than in shading because when I was doing it in shading, when I was testing it around, it wasn't um, it wasn't instancing the, the random value across each face. So if something was on the border, its uh, corresponding neighbor border would be a different color and it would break the seamlessness. So we'll just do it this way. Uh, works fine. We'll do random value and then we're going to do a mesh island into the index is our ID between 0 and 1 and we want to capture this in a color attribute color face corner attribute attribute and then go to our color attributes create a new one face corner color color and then make sure you actually set this in our output so uh, that's it for the Geometry node setup. Um, let's go to shading and uh, start on this shading setup. So we want to grab a transparent texture or transparent BSDF rather. Uh, combine those with a mix node. I'm going to move this one to be on top. And then let's grab our color attribute as well as our UV map. UV map, color attribute. And then we will color our emission based off this color attribute. If we view this um, from the active camera, um, make sure we set this to square. Forgot to do that. So set it to a 1K image. And uh, while we're here, let's change two cycles. Um, I will just change to something like 12 samples with 32 transparency bounces and 32 max. Okay, um, that should be good for that. But you can see that um, these random values are perfectly tiled. When I was doing it in shading, it, it wasn't working. So this is a workaround to get that working. Let's select our emitter again. And now we want to mix between um, some image textures. So this part is kind of tedious to set up. So we want fingerprint texture one, fingerprint texture two, and then I will show you a three so you can get the idea. Um, but really you can extend this to as many fingerprint textures as you have. So we're going to want to mix and mix and then do a greater or a math node set to greater than 
And there we have three total textures, so we're going to set this first one to 1 over 3, the second one to 2 over 3. Set the random value as our selector. Make sure it's not on alpha. And then make sure we have the UV map set here. And of course, use that to select. And then this final mix node will select whether we want um, an emission or a transparent BSDF. And just so you're aware of what the alphas actually look like, they're black with white. So this final texture, anywhere that's white, is going to get this emission color, which is just going to be this color attribute. Anywhere that's black is just going to be transparent and be projected on through to this void. So now, let's, uh, let's do a little render, see how things are looking. So uh, it's looking pretty good, if I do say so. And then once this completes, um, my laptop is struggling. But anyway, we'll just cancel this render. It's fine. Um, go to image or view rather, click repeat, and you'll see that this perfectly tiles across the border. So I'll show you um, my final setup that I have going on. I have selected through between 11 fingerprint textures, and that um, is basically the only difference between my version and the version I just showed you. So if you would like to get um, the final version, just go to my Gumroad. And you can grab this, pick this up for a dollar. It's the blend file plus the 11 fingerprint alphas that come with it. And uh, you can generate that. Also be sure to check out hardsurface.net. Uh, you can see that this was really a follow-on of the video I did three years ago where I first explained this instancing technique. And uh, yeah, shout out to this commenter, Fleity, for being the inspiration to actually put this tutorial together. So, yeah, uh, you know, like, dislike, comment, rate, subscribe. Um, give me some feedback, and I'll see you in the next video.